Hello and welcome to our webinar, Optimization of Simulink Model Parameters. My name is Arkady Turevsky. I'm here with Alex Tothert. We are in the controls team here at MathWorks, and today we hope to tell you about some new exciting capabilities for optimizing model parameters in Simulink. Okay, so let's start by going through a simple explanation of the problems that we're going to be discussing today. So let's say that you have modeled your design in Simulink. In this case, we're seeing a simple Simscape model of a car suspension. Now you want to optimize your design to meet um, several different requirements. So one of the requirements could be some time domain requirement. For example, you want some signal from the model to fall within prescribed bounds. So you run the simulation, you look at the signal, and you notice that it's not quite meeting the requirements. Maybe some step response is not fast enough, or um, some signal violates some bound, or something like that, and you want to fix that. Another type of requirement you could have is a frequency domain requirement. So let's say for the suspension, you want to design it so that it rejects high-frequency road noise and disturbance. Okay, And so again, you test your design, you come up with a frequency response, and you notice that it doesn't quite meet the requirement because the magnitude of the trans function from road disturbance to passenger position is not low enough in the frequency range of interest. And you could also, of course, have multiple other requirements like cost, size, energy used, weight, and so on and so forth for your design. Now, how would you go about tuning the parameters of your design, optimizing your design to meet all of those requirements. One option is to do it manually, but that's of course tedious and a time-consuming process. So a better option is to use the power of optimization to automatically tune all of those parameters for you. And that's what Simulink Design Optimization does. It takes all those knobs that are associated with different parameters in your system, maybe um, spring stiffness and uh, damper coefficient and different masses and uh, tunes all of them simultaneously and automatically to meet all of those requirements. So this is the tool that we'll talk about today in this webinar. And that's a brief overview of what this tool does. So our agenda is to talk about how you can use this tool to systematically improve system design using optimization and specifically talk about simultaneous optimization um, of the system to meet time and frequency domain requirements. And we'll also talk about how you can specify and use custom objectives and constraints in your optimization. These two new capabilities, frequency domain optimization and custom objectives and constraints, are new features in Simulink Design Optimization in release 2011b. So, again, let's talk about some of the challenges of doing uh, parameter optimization in Simulink. So one way you could do parameter tuning is manually tuning each individual parameter. As we said, this is quite tedious and uh, time-consuming and you're not guaranteed to get the optimal results. Another option is to write scripts utilizing algorithms from optimization toolbox. This works well for you know general optimization problems in MATLAB, but if you're dealing with a Simulink model and trying to optimize parameters in a Simulink model to uh, meet certain requirements, this is often not the best way to go. And um, it's not the best way to go due to several different reasons. One of them is that it's quite hard to do uh, things like logging Simulink signals and then updating model parameters with uh, values that you come up with during optimization that require some expertise in dealing with Simulink that a lot of people don't have. Another thing that is probably more important is that oftentimes when you're optimizing designs expressed by Simulink models, you, you have those standard time and frequency domain requirements. You want certain step response characteristics. You want the magnitude of a transfer function to be within prescribed limits. And so manually coding those requirements is difficult. And the fi finally, the third problem is that if you're running the optimization and uh, the values that the optimization algorithm comes up create uh, problems with the simulation of the model that can um, 
uh, stop the optimization process. Simulink design optimization deals with all of those problems. It automatically locks all the uh, Simulink signals of interest for you. We will see today how you can easily um, do that. It also comes up with built-in most uh, frequently used time and frequency domain requirements so you don't have to code them. You can just use its requirements out of the box and it also deals very nicely with the edge cases so if there is a problem with the simulation you can say with this tool um, that you want to continue the optimization and ignore the errors and, and the tool will power through those issues okay on top of all of that simulant design optimization provides very nice um, easy to use graphical user interface that helps you set up your optimization problem and run it so, brief overview of this tool. It lets you tune parameters in Simulink model using numerical optimization. It's built on top of optimization toolbox, but it provides additional value by giving you the ability to use those um, uh, time and frequency domain requirements out of the box. It um, does all the signal logging, all the low-level um, manipulation of Simulink model for you. You don't have to deal with that. And it also lets you to define custom constraints um, and cost functions, and that's what we will talk about today. I'll mention later today that you can also use this product for another use case when you want to estimate parameters in the model so that the model matches experimental test data. But we'll talk about this a little later. So with that, let's jump into our first demo and see how you can use this tool to optimize system behavior in time and frequency domain. I will switch to MATLAB and I have created several shortcuts to help me navigate through my demos and we'll start the first demo by using this first shortcut. And here is a Simulink model of an F-14 aircraft longitudinal flight control. And in the Simulink model, we have modeled aircraft dynamics, we have modeled the controller, the wind gusts, and the G-force acting on the pilot. The input to the model is the pilot stick command, and there are several outputs like angle of attack, pitch rate, and the G-force acting on the pilot. Now, if you look at our controller, we will see that it has several different parameters, uh, KF, KI, KA and KQ. These are the gains that we want to optimize and we want to optimize them to meet three different requirements. One of them is in time domain and two of them are in frequency domain. Let's first look at the time domain requirement. It's expressed by this block alpha response. If you click on this block and open the block dialog, we will see that this is a block that lets us specify desired step response characteristics for our signal angle of attack in this case. So we can specify the time when the step happens, the initial and final value, the rise time, we want to have a rise time less than that number, we want to have a settling time less than this number, and we want an overshoot to be less than this number. Okay, so um, this is the first requirement. And to actually show you where this block comes from, I will go and open a link to a library block, and here is library where this block comes from and this is a library in Simulink design optimization okay so if you go into Simulink library browser here under Simulink design optimization we have mold verification library and that's where those blocks reside and as you can see here you have a block for specifying step response characteristics you have another block that you can use to specify that the signal should be within prescribed bounds and you have another block that specifies that the signal should follow some reference trajectory that you can specify. So using one of those blocks you can quickly define time domain requirements like we did here. We'll see later today that it's also possible to specify those types of requirements without adding blocks to the model. But now let's talk about uh, two other requirements that we have in our system. These are frequency domain requirements. The first one is a requirement on the pilot G response, so it's this block. So basically what we want to do is calculate a transfer function from pilot stick input, the signal, 
to the g-force acting on the pilot, the signal. And we want the magnitude of this transfer function to be below certain value in a certain frequency range. And basically we want that so that the g-force acting on the pilot is small enough so that it doesn't lead to pilot um, blacking out and losing control of the aircraft. So let's take a look at this block. What we do here is we specify how to compute the transfer function and that's done in this linearization tab. So here we specify the input and output signals. We can quickly specify them by pressing this plus button, then clicking on the signal of interest in the model and adding it to this block configuration. So we see the input and output signals that we specified. We also specify the condition when the trans function will be calculated. In this case, we are calculating it at zero simulation time. And in the bound step, we specify the actual limits that we want to enforce. So in the frequency range from 5 to 100 radians per second, we want the magnitude of the trans function to be below 0 dBs. OK. Now the second block that we use for another frequency domain requirement is a pitch rate loop. And with this block we want the transfer function for the pitch rate loop to also have a certain shape and frequency domain and you will see that later. And what that will do is that it will guarantee us good handling qualities for the aircraft. So now when we specify it those blocks, we can start the optimization tool. The only thing I want to do before I start that is show you where those frequency domain blocks come from. So let's go and look at the library block and here we see the library and let me show you where that library resides. So let me go into Simulink library browser Okay, and those blocks are in the Simulink control design tool model verification library and you see all of those blocks here and so you can use those blocks to specify common frequency domain requirements limit the magnitude of the transfer function specify desired damping ratio or natural frequency or gain or phase margins or singular value characteristics um, all of these requirements can be easily specified using those blocks from Simulink control design so now let's go and start our optimization tool. So we'll go into Tools, Response Optimization and bring up the graphical user interface. So here we automatically get three plots for the design requirements we specified. This is the design requirement on our angle of attack. This is the design requirement on the G response transfer function and this is the envelope we want to enforce for the pitch rate loop. Let's run the model and plot current response by pressing this button and let's organize all those plots side by side so we can clearly see what's happening. So as you see we are not quite meeting this requirement and we are violating this requirement quite a bit but it looks like we are meeting the pitch rate requirement already with the current design. So now how do we work with this tool? It's pretty straightforward and the workflow is from the left to the right. So you start as this shows you with defining variables. Okay, and so what we want to do is define variables that we want to optimize. So let's create a new set of design variables, variables to optimize. Okay, so we get this window, and in this window we can select parameters from our workspace that we want to tune. And in our case, we know it's those four parameters. So we add them as the parameters to tune and here we can also specify minimum and maximum values and the scaling factors. In our case we want to keep the sign of all those parameters the same as it is for the current design. So we'll keep this number positive by restricting the minimum value to zero. We'll keep this kf gain negative by restricting the maximum value to zero and we'll do the same for ki and then for kq the lower bound is zero. So now we specified the minimum and maximum values. We'll press OK and this creates variable design bars, so design variables. If you click on it you can see the properties of these variables in this variable preview window and in general here you have access to MATLAB workspace, to model workspace and to the workspace for this specific tool. So you see all those variables 
for the model are defined in the model workspace and that's what we see here and we created one variable design vars in the tool workspace that's the variable we will be changing during optimization next step is to specify the requirements in our case we have already specified three requirements that we want to use so using the select button we can turn on or off some requirements that we want or don't want to use during optimization we can also create or add new requirements by pressing on this new button and here we can choose those frequency or time domain requirements that we want we can also specify that we want to lock some model signal to use in calculating the requirement and we'll see how that works later Okay. then you can configure the plots so in this case in addition to three plots for our requirements we'll also look at how the design variables are changing during optimization and finally we'll also um, click on options to see what we have in there and we'll ask the tool to show us the optimization progress during optimization we can also um, specify whether or not we want to update the plots and whether or not we want to update the model at the end of optimization. We also have some options to specify which particular optimization algorithm we use and these algorithms are from optimization toolbox or if you have global optimization toolbox as well you get access to optimization algorithms from that product. And finally if you have parallel computing toolbox you can use the parallel computing capabilities to speed up the optimization process. So once you specified all those options, you can simply press Optimize button to start the optimization. Okay, so in this window, we will see the optimization progress. The tool shows us the number of iterations, the cost function, and the, uh, how much the constraints are violated. And as the tool is running, as we go through optimization, through iterations rather, we see how the design is changing and how the parameter values are changing. Okay, so the solid blue line here is the current value, the current um, uh, response of the system. Um, and here we see how the parameter values are changing. So in this case the optimization converges after four iterations and we see that we are meeting all the requirements. If you want to um, get a little bit more details, uh, for example by zooming in, we can do that by zooming on a particular plot to see um, the system response in more detail. Okay. So let's go back to the presentation and just to summarize what we saw is that with this tool you can specify common time domain requirements like step response bounds, general signal bounds, reference trajectory, you can specify various frequency domain requirements, uh, bounds on the magnitude of any transfer function in your model, gain and phase margins, natural frequency and damping ratio bounds and so on and you can simultaneously optimize frequency and time domain responses of the model and with this tool you can also monitor all plots in one window. Okay, let's now talk about creating custom requirements. The first demo dealt with creating requirements that are common time and frequency domain requirements. But as we discussed in the beginning of the presentation, sometimes you have requirements like cost or size or weight that you know are not easily expressed or maybe some requirement on the energy used and so you need the flexibility to express your own custom requirement and you have that ability with this tool. So let me go back to MATLAB and we'll start our second demo so I'm going to use my second shortcut here. Okay and let me start by showing you the simulink model. So here we are modeling single hydraulic cylinder. The cylinder itself is modeled using sim hydraulics product. If we open the block dialog we will see that the cylinder is parameterized with a bunch of different parameters spring rate, flow gain, actuator cross-sectional area, so on and so forth. And the output from the model um, is the piston pressure and also the various pressures for our cylinder and what we want to do here with this um, problem is 
make sure that the piston response that the cylinder generates, that the cylinder provides, is fast and stable, that the pressures are all limited uh, below prescribed maximum values, and we also want to minimize the cross-sectional area of the cylinder to accomplish all of this. Okay, so let's bring up this graphical user interface and start setting up the optimization problem. As we have done before, we are going to walk from the left to the right. So we will start by defining the design variables to optimize. So again, we'll add new design variables. And in our case, we'll be optimizing the cross-sectional area AC and the spring constant K. So we'll select them and add as, well as parameters to optimize. Now we will specify some minimum and maximum values. For the cross-sectional area, we want to limit it to be a cross-sectional area with minimum radius of 1 centimeter and maximum radius of 2 centimeters. So in terms of the area, it um, translates into those numbers. And for the spring constant, we want to limit it um, with these two values, 10,000 and 100,000. You'll also notice that the parameter values have very different order of magnitude. And so this is typically something that optimization um, has a hard time dealing with. And so to help, to help our optimization tool, we'll specify the scaling factors. So for this variable, the scaling factor will be this one. And for this variable, the scaling factor will be hundred thousands. Okay, so that will help our optimization tool. So now we click OK, and we have created a variable design wars that describes the parameters that we'll be optimizing. Next, we need to specify the requirements. Okay, so in this case, we haven't specified requirements in the model yet, so we'll just add them from this graphical user interface. So we'll click on New, and we'll start by specifying the um, model signals that we want to log for evaluating again the requirements. So we'll click on Signal. This dialog tells us that no signals are currently selected, and we need to go back to the model and click on a signal in order to select it. So let's go back to the model. And one requirement is that pressures are all below some value. So we'll click on the pressure signal. We see that this is selected now, so we'll click on it and add it and we'll call the signal pressures. Okay, we click OK, and we see that we added a new um, variable to our design optimization workspace, signal pressures. Okay, similarly, we'll add a second signal. So again, we'll go back to the model and select the piston position signal. And we'll add it here, and we'll call the signal piston position. Okay, and now we have another variable in our design optimization workspace. So now we are logging those signals, and we want to use them in evaluating against requirements. So the first requirement that we'll add is a requ is requirement on uh, pressures. Okay, so it's a signal bound type of requirement. So we'll call it max pressure and we want to limit the pressure so the requirement type is um, less than and the values let's actually go and type the values in so we want to have those limits Okay, and in the lower part of this dialog, we need to specify which signal we are going to use against this requirement. And so, naturally, in this case, it's a pressure signal. And so we say OK, and we just added a new requirement on the pressures. Okay, and we have an object max pressure here. So let's go and add another requirement. And this one is going to be a requirement on the piston response, and so it's a step response envelope. So we'll call this one piston response. 
and it will specify all those values so the final value that we will have in this case is going to be 0.04 okay and the rise time that we want to have is 0.04 and the settling time is 0.05 and we are going to evaluate this requirement against the piston position signal okay so we'll click that and we'll click OK and so we created a new requirement on the piston position okay if you ever want to go and edit those requirements we can click select select this requirement and press edit button to edit it okay we're almost done here the last thing that we want to do is add another requirement remember we want our pressures to be below this value we want our piston position to be in this envelope but we also want to minimize the cross-sectional area of the piston okay so we'll click new and we'll create a new custom requirement okay so this requirement name we'll call it mean area okay and then here you need to specify a MATLAB function that specifies your requirement. If you don't have this MATLAB function yet, when you click open, it will open MATLAB editor where you can type in the code. If you already have this function, like we created in this case, we'll type the name of that function. So in this case, that's the name of our requirement function and this requirement type is a minimum because we want to minimize the cross-sectional area now we don't really need to feed those signals in so we just leave them unchecked um, and we can um, now press this open button okay and it opens this function that we pre-created and as you see what this function does is that it passes in structured data now the data contains design variables that we are optimizing as well as any uh, signals that we chose to pass to this function in our case because we are not passing any signals data just contains design variables we're optimizing and so as you remember cross-sectional area is the first design variable so we get this cross-sectional area variable from our design variables and our objective is simply the value of this cross-sectional area and we are going to be minimizing it so it's a very simple custom objective but nevertheless it shows you how you can create um, your own custom objective and actually I should say that here in this MATLAB file you can write any MATLAB code to create any type of objective that you want and so you have access to uh, design variables and to any signals that you want to log from the model and any mathematical expression um, uh, using those signals and design variables can be your objective that you're minimizing or um, making sure that it's less than zero or greater than zero okay so we click OK and now we'll also click a plot that shows us the value of design variables during optimization we'll look at the scaled values so that we can clearly see the trajectory we'll start with plotting the current response okay so we see that our pressures are below the limit so they're already meeting requirement but our piston response is not quite meeting the requirements yet okay so let's now start the optimization by pressing the optimize button you can also minimize this data browser area if you want to maximize the real estate for uh, observing those plots so let's press optimize the tool starts working again it's going through iterations and we see that it's getting closer and closer to meeting the requirements we see how the values are changing and after about five iterations it converges and because our objective in this case is minimization of the value AC this function that we're minimizing here is AC value so we see it starts from 
um, 10 to the minus 3 and at the end of optimization we um, make it 5 to the 10 to the minus 4 so we really minimize this value while keeping all of those other objectives satisfied To recap what we just saw is that with this tool Simulink Design Optimization you can use custom constraints and cost functions for um, setting up and running your optimization problems. You can minimize those custom constraints as objectives to be minimized, equality or inequality constraints, and you can specify custom requirements in both time and frequency domain. And in fact you can also include statistical properties into custom requirements. And now this last point is a pretty interesting one. So what I want to do is use another demo to show you how that works. Before I run that demo, I also want to mention another important point. For people who are new to this tool, graphical user interface is a nice way to start. But if you're if you get comfortable with it and you become a power user and you want to run a bunch of optimizations and a batch mode type of scenario, we also have command line interface that you can use to um, basically script uh, those optimization problems and the workflow is very similar so you specify which signal from the model you want to lock so as you can see in this example we are specifying the, the signal to lock um, and then you just uh, create the um, objective that you will be minimizing or evaluating um, as an inequality or equality to use in your optimization okay so the idea here is that you also have all the power and flexibility of the uh, of command line interface um, for power users to script batch mode optimizations okay so let's now look at the third and final demo that I want to show you here and it's a demo that shows how you can do simple suspension optimization So let me go back to MATLAB and start our third demo what we have here is a very simple model of a car suspension modeled in Simscape. We have the spring with parameter k and the damper with parameter b. We have a mass. We model the mass as a nominal mass m0 and the mass of the load. And we are modeling the disturbance force from the road, bumps and things like that. And we are measuring the mass position and velocity. And our goal is to maximize the comfort level of this uh, suspension by tuning <coughs> spring parameter k and damper parameter b. Now two of the requirements are defined as frequency domain requirements in the model. The first one limits the magnitude of the transfer function from disturbance force to position of the mass at a certain frequency range. And the second one that I want to show you is the requirement that lets us specify that we want to have less than 5% overshoot. And what this basically translates to is a certain region in a complex plane where we want our poles to be. You'll see that in a second. So let's go into our response optimization tool. And we get the plots for the two requirements that we defined in the model. Here you see the region where our poles should be in order for the overshoot to be less than 5%. Now instead of setting up the problem from scratch, I'll load the session I saved in the model workspace. Here you see different design objectives. The first two that we already discussed and then we'll discuss this one in a second. First, design variables. These are B and K, as we discussed. And in this case, we also define uncertain variables. And the uncertain variable that we have here is M load. The nominal value for this variable is zero, but we're also saying that it can take the values of 50, 100, and 150 kilos. And what we want to do is evaluate our model at all those different values, nominal and 50, 100, and 150. And when we calculate the objective, use those values for objective calculation. So basically we want to um, have an objective that shows us the level of discomfort we feel with the suspension. We will minimize that objective 
and that objective will include not just the nominal mass but also the cases when m load is equal to 50, 100 or 150 kilos. So let's look at our objectives. Here we have the first two that we already discussed. Number four is the reliability objective I'm not going to cover. I don't have time to do it. We'll instead look at max comfort objective. So here we see that we're going to be minimizing a number that this function computes. And when we compute the number, we will be using the velocity signal from the model. Now, before we start going through this function, let me try to explain quickly what it does. Basically, we get the velocity signal from the model, and we calculate the acceleration as well using velocity. Then we look at the maximum value of velocity and the maximum value of acceleration. We add those two numbers up, and that's the level of discomfort we are going to experience. That's the number we will minimize. The only twist here is that because we are modeling the situations when m load is not just zero, but also 50, 100, and 150 kilos, we'll run the simulation not once, but four times for m load values of 0, 50, 100, and 150, and we'll repeat those calculations for velocity and acceleration four times. And to calculate our objective, we'll take the mean of the four values of maximum velocity and the mean of four values of maximum acceleration and use them in the linear combination to calculate the number to minimize. I'll make use of parallel computing resources on my machine. In this case it makes a lot of sense because as I said we'll be running a lot of simulations because we are modeling all these different uh, load masses. Okay, And here under options we'll set the option to use parallel computing. All right, so now we're ready. Let's minimize this. Let's start the optimization now. Okay, so the tool will take some time to figure out how to um, configure the parallel computing session. And once it does that, it should start the optimization and the optimization should go faster with parallel computing. Now we see that um, as we go through iterations we start from the design that's not meeting the requirements. By the way, the four crosses that you see correspond to four different values to M load. And so you see as we run through optimization um, you're getting closer and closer to meeting our requirements and the maximum value of the velocity signal is getting smaller as expected. It converges quite quickly after a few iterations and we have the optimized design and we used parallel workers for optimization as I mentioned. So this concludes the demo. To summarize what we saw is that we are able to specify uncertainty or possible variations for various parameters in our model and to account for that uncertainty when we are setting up optimization problem. And this lets us optimize statistical properties of our model as we just saw. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention is that everything I showed so far was for a case when we wanted to optimize parameters of the model to meet some time or frequency domain requirements. A completely different scenario for using this tool is to optimize parameters of the model to make the model match test data. So basically, your model describes some physical device you collected some input-output test data from that device and you want to automatically calibrate model parameters so that this device matches what the data shows as well as possible. This tool does that as well. I'm not going to give you a demo or talk any more about this. If you're interested, please uh, take a look at one of the webinars that we have on this topic. So in summary, we saw how Simulink design optimization lets you systematically improve system design by automatically tuning parameters to meet requirements in both time and frequency domain and how it lets you create and use your own custom requirements and objectives. And again, the benefit of this tool is that it gives you 
ready to use out of the box standard time and frequency domain requirements. It does all the low level stuff for you like signal logging and model cleanup and it deals very well with um, edge cases that you might run um, into when you're simulating your model. You can learn more about Simulink design optimization by visiting the product page. You can also take a look at Simulink control design tool that's the product that we use to linearize the model to get the transfer function that we were using to evaluate against frequency domain requirements. Okay, so if you had a question about which tools you would need to do what I showed you today, the answer is MATLAB, optimization toolbox, Simulink design optimization and Simulink control design. And if you're using parallel computing, parallel computing toolbox. And if you're using optimization algorithms from um, global optimization toolbox, you would need that tool as well. So this pretty much wraps up my presentation. Thank you for your attention.